Welcome to the Free Methodist Church of Santa Barbara. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to say welcome and we are so glad that you are here. We are so thankful for our God who is not confined to temples or sanctuaries built by human hands, but who has poured out his spirit onto all the earth and is present with us, whether we are worshiping through Zoom or YouTube or other technology. We know that God is among us and drawing us together through the power of His Spirit. We wanted to wish you a happy Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the day that we commemorate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey and being hailed as King. Later in the service, we will be partaking of the Sacrament of Communion, so we ask that you prepare your elements as symbols of Christ's body and blood. We also want to remind you that the pastors will be available over Zoom to pray with you after the service. We will be praying at a new time, 1045. Please prepare your hearts as I read aloud the call to worship from John 12, as we will be singing praises to our humble King. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Please pray with me. God, we are so thankful that we get to worship you, our humble king. A king who did not arrive into Jerusalem with chariots and great fanfare, but who arrived humbly on a donkey. God, we ask that you would be present in our world. We ask that you would be present in our families. We ask that you would reveal to us what it means that you are king. You are king over all the nations. We want to trust you during this time. We want to praise you. We want to sing Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And so we praise you this morning, Jesus, and we invite you into our hearts and our lives and our community and our world. I pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. i 
Hello, Free Methodist family, and happy Palm Sunday. As we gather at the feet of Jesus, may we be reminded of Mary Magdalene pouring out perfume, thanking Jesus for his resurrecting power. We bring our brokenness, all that we are, to his feet, because there we find new life. As we follow Jesus, laying down all our fears and doubts, all our praises, all our frustrations and our joys, all that we are at his feet, may we see new horizons, may we see the faithfulness of God, the promises of God fulfilled. 
the one that sets us free, now leads the way. As Jesus approaches Jerusalem, may we be reminded that he is the way, the truth, and life eternal. So sing with me. Through every battle, every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, you are my portion, you are my God, we believe that you are the way, the truth, and the life. On this Palm Sunday, we breathe in that newness of life. We breathe in life eternal. And we join in with 
your earliest followers in laying down our brokenness at your feet because we believe in you and your faithfulness and your kindness, that you fulfill your promises, that you are a good God, and that you never leave us. Be with us in this time as we encounter your word and what you have to tell us. In Jesus' name, the Savior of all creation. Amen. Hello, church family. Have some announcements for us this morning. First of all, midday prayer is going to be happening every weekday from 11.30 to 12. And this is a time to be together with one of our pastors and to pray and let God lead us in that time of prayer. And so on Mondays from here forward, we're going to be sending out a link that you can use throughout the Monday through Friday times. So join us for that and interact with us as we pray together for our world, for our community, for us, especially during this time. Also on Sunday, right after this service, if you watch it around 9.30, at 10.45, we're moving the time a little bit, at 10.45, we will have another prayer time together where you can come on and put prayer requests in the chat section and there will be some pastors there to pray for those as well. This is kind of our praises and prayer request time that we're doing together at 1045. And you will be and have received a link in the email uh, or it's on our website as well. So go there and join us for that time. Mask for Missions, we're working on that together Shannon's reported that last week over 100 masks were made thanks to people in our church, and we're very grateful for that. If you'd like to contribute uh, some different supplies for that, that would be great. We need uh, some bias tape and also some fabric that you could donate. Uh, talk to Shannon, or I mean email Shannon or talk to Shannon if you'd like to do that. And also if you'd just like to donate, a dollar will make a mask, so you can do that as well. Virtual small groups are continuing, and we're trying to form more. Pastor Nikki will have all the information for that, and you can see how to contact her for that. It's a great way to stay connected uh, and be on Zoom or other platforms that could be helpful to keep groups together and join new groups as well. And of course, uh, there's so many different ways that you could be helping during this time as well, using the gifts and the time and the talents that God's given you. Uh, we've mentioned before uh, the blood bank, American Red Cross is always looking for more blood, uh, food bank, a unity shop, uh, congregational care team. If you're interested in more about that, talk to Pastor Nikki as well. We do care about reaching out to all of our congregation. And so if you have needs or know of needs among our church family or even just friends of yours that have no church family, let us know. We care and we want to reach out. Easter and Tenebrae are going to both be on YouTube. Tenebrae is our Good Friday service. And of course, Easter, we will have one service offered on that day as well. So look for the link to that soon and join us for each of those services this coming Holy Week. What to think about giving and our worship and giving. We're in a time where we may be socially distant, but our church is very alive. We are caring for people, we're active and moving forward in the community, in our church family, and so we ask you to continue to worship in your giving as God gives you the resources to do that. Proverbs 11.24 says, Those who give generously receive more, but those who are stingy with what is appropriate will grow needy. And so the Bible reminds us that as we give, that 
we will receive more. And it's not more necessarily we receive more money back because we give. It's more fulfillment and reward in giving and worshiping and giving. And we let the Lord lead us in that. So just a reminder, there are a couple of different ways that you can give. Online is probably the easiest way these, these days, but if that's a challenge for you uh, or not possible for some other reason, you can always mail a check to the church or we have a drop box outside the administrative assistance office, uh, Kara Emerson's office. You can slide it in there and we will be checking that regularly as well. Thank you for how you're worshiping and you're giving throughout the week through your time and your talents and all that you do. We are grateful. God will be praised and we will go forward. Let's worship in our giving. It's our practice on Sundays when we take communion to have a time of liturgical prayer where people say their sentence prayer and we all say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Or if it's a praise, we say, Lord, hear our praise. Since we can't do that as a church family in our congregation today, uh, I thought I would just pray, but I'm going to leave some, some moments of silence for you to pray for specific people who have been on your heart and mind or for yourself and uh and and i'll i'll end those moments with lord in your mercy hear our prayer or hear our praise so let's uh pray together jesus thank you for who you are our rock no matter what's going on in our life throughout our life you are our rock you are sovereign over everything and yet you are intimate with each of us who call upon your name and who trust you. Lord, in this time, there's so much to pray for. There's so much going on in our world um, with this pandemic and just with normal life going on. And so, so Lord, hear these prayers from our church body. Hear these prayers um, for ourselves or for people we know or for neighbors. So say your sentence prayer just in the quietness of your own heart to, to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And yet, God, we um, know that you are still at work even with everything going on, even though it feels like life is paused in some way and that that as we're on lockdown, but you are not paused, you are working and you are doing great things. And there is so much to praise you for when we look around. And so, so church family at this time, just uh, dwell on something, praise God for something that you are thankful for in this season. Lord, hear our praise. Thank you. Thank you. And Jesus, would you breathe peace, your peace, into the home of all who are listening right now, all who are praying this prayer. Would you breathe your peace so that we can share that peace with others. We can share it with our neighbors, with friends and family. And uh, Lord, would you protect us would you protect our bodies and our spirits in this time? We ask this in your powerful name. Amen. Hey, FM Kids. It's Maddie coming at you from my apartment. I'm sure you guys are at home too. I hope you're staying safe and having as much fun as you can. And I really miss you guys. I wish we could be all together. I miss coming in and singing songs together 
and sitting down and learning about Jesus and doing our crafts and then going outside and seeing Nancy there with the wonderful snacks that she picks out for us. All those things, but I especially miss you and I am looking forward to when we can be together again. Today on Palm Sunday, we're going to be learning about a story from the book of John and Colleen's going to talk more about it later, but today when I'm sharing, I want you to think about something that's really valuable to you. Valuable is like something that's really meaningful, you really care a lot about it, it's really special to you. Something that's really special to me and is really valuable to me is my wedding ring. This is really valuable to me not only because it means that I'm married and I get to wear it every day, but also because my wedding ring was given to my husband from his uncle who passed away um, and then my wedding band was made from a ring that was given to me by my grandma. So it's really special. I'd have a really hard time getting rid of it or if something happened to it, I'd be really, really sad. So in thinking about something that's really valuable to you, we're going to talk about a woman named Mary. She was hanging out with Jesus, sitting at his feet, and she had something that was really valuable. She had a jar of perfume. This is just a jar of perfume that I had lying around, but this is maybe kind of what it would look like. Probably looked a little bit different back in the day. But this was something that was really special to her. And it was really special because it kind of costs a lot of money. Let me tell you how much it costs. Imagine in January, the beginning of the year, you decide that there's something really special you want to get. But it takes an entire year of doing chores, helping your parents, mowing the lawn, doing the dishes to earn enough money to be able to get this special thing. And that's what this jar of perfume was worth. It was worth an entire year's worth of wages. So a person who was working every day, what they made, that's how much it was worth. So it was really valuable and I think it was really special to this woman, to Mary. But you know what she does with it? She takes off the lid and she pours it on Jesus' feet. And then she takes her hair and she, washed, she washes his feet with her hair. And when I first read this, I was like, okay, that sounds just a little silly because it's hard to imagine washing someone's feet with my hair. But it really showed her devotion and her love for Jesus. That she would give up something and give this to him. That something that's so valuable and means so much to her and just give it to Jesus and do something so meaningful to him. And I think it shows a lot of bravery too because there was people in the room with them that thought this was just so crazy of her to do. They were like, why would you do this? Why wouldn't you just sell it, get all this money, and then give it to the poor? And this guy who was saying it, he like didn't even care about the poor that much. He just wanted to get take some money for himself. So it shows where his head was at. But Mary had such a good heart and she knew that her time with Jesus wouldn't last forever so she wanted to make that time really meaningful and really valuable so she gave him something and did something to him that really meant a lot and that Jesus really saw as something that meant a lot and I just think it was such an amazing story that she would do something like that you know and it made me think that this week and next week and the weeks to come that Maybe we can be thinking of ways that we can show our love to Jesus. And this might look different than it did for Mary, but maybe there's ways that we can show him how much we love him. And I think one way that this might look is showing our love to others. And obviously we're a little bit limited because we can't go outside, we can't be around people like we normally can. But maybe be thinking, maybe be thinking, oh, maybe I can, you know, send a nice letter or I can send a video to a friend who needs to be encouraged and hear how much I care about them. And I think showing love to others really shows love to Jesus as well. So I hope you're thinking about that this week. In closing, we're going to read this prayer that Doug sent out for us to color this week. And I colored along with you guys because I love to color. I hope you guys had a fun time too. So let's read this together in closing. God of presence and strength, Help us feel you here with us when we are anxious and afraid, when the future feels unwieldy and uncertain. We know nothing is unknown to you, O oh God. We know you are our rock and our comfort in times of trouble. Give us wisdom and courage to make changes that will help things get better. Amen. 
Alright guys, I miss you so much and I hope you have a really nice Palm Sunday with your family. We'll see you later. On this Palm Sunday, we read a passage from John 12, 1 through 11. I will read now. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, he kept the common purse and used to steal it, used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and believing in Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A friend this week sent me a quote from the pastor and respected author A.W. Tozer. It summed up all that we have been talking about in these last few weeks, so much so that maybe all we needed was this quote all along. Reverend Tozer said this, What a scared world needs is a fearless church. Man, will that preach. When the world is mired in deep anxiety like it is now, the church needs to rise up with boldness and exemplify the life of Christ, we profess. Amen. Tozer was born into poverty in 1897 in Ohio. As a teenager, he worked at a tire factory. 
on his way home from work one day, he overheard a street preacher giving a message. And the preacher said this, if you don't know how to be saved, just call on the name of God and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Tozer went home that day, went into his attic and gave his life to Jesus Christ. Imagine how God's obedient servant on the street that day changed the course of one person's life, who then went on to become a pastor for 44 years, who must have led countless people to the Lord and still is a great voice of influence in the church today. Tozer had no formal education. He taught himself what he could not afford at high school, college, or seminary. He never owned a car and gave away most of his family's income. But he wrote more than 60 books and became a great voice in the church that he loved so much. God met A.W. Tozer on that walk home, which led to a fulfilling life of service for Christ all of his 66 years. We are changed when Christ meets us, and he changes the direction of our journey. The choices we make then become about him, which gives us a boldness that at once can be shocking, but also an incredible witness. In our passage today, Mary shows us how this is true. Mary is the sibling of Martha and Lazarus. We first meet her at a different dinner party where her sister is serving while Mary sits at the feet of Jesus, listening to him teach, revolutionary for a woman at that time. This makes her sister mad. So Martha goes and tattles to Jesus, hoping that he will send Mary back to the kitchen. He does the opposite telling Martha that her focus of worrying that evening was her problem, not that of her sister. Mary had made the better choice to sit and learn at his feet. In the chapter just before the one we read in John, we see Mary and her family again. Lazarus is gravely ill. So a message is sent for Jesus to come right away. When he arrives, after purposely waiting two days, Lazarus is already dead. And again, Martha gives the Lord a piece of her mind, how he could have saved her brother if he would have come sooner. When he asks for Mary, she comes outside with others who have come to console her and mourn with her and her family. She kneels down and says, Lord, Lazarus would still be alive if you would have only come sooner. Jesus then told them to take the stone away where Lazarus had been laid to rest. He prays to God and he orders his friend to come out. Many believe that day, although others see it as more proof that Jesus must be stopped at all costs. Imagine, imagine that being the response to God performing such an astounding miracle, a miracle that brought life back to the family and to the world. The story we read occurs a bit later, and it marks the beginning of the week when Jesus died. The day after Mary anoints Jesus, a great crowd of people wave their palm branches after him and hail him as the King of Israel, the one who comes in the name of God. Later in this week, we wonder, where are all these people? When he is being tried as a common criminal, are they the same ones who scream for Pilate to crucify him? What looks like an act of worship might actually be a self-serving attempt to support someone they thought could help them socially or politically. Yet Mary's act is one of true devotion. She is honoring Jesus with a depth of understanding of who he is, which very few had at that time. 
what courage it must have taken for her to do what she did. A woman didn't pour perfume over a man's head in public. She certainly would not have had her hair down, nor would she have used it to wipe his feet. The perfume itself was believed to be imported from India, and it was very costly because it was pure. It would have cost a year's wages at a time for an average person. So Judas's criticism is one that would have sounded reasonable had his own motives not been in question. In their time and place, many lived in great poverty or at the very edge of survival. We may not think much of it, but this perfume today could have cost upwards of $12,000. $12,000. Does that change our mind about what happened? Most of us would probably agree with the sentiment of how that kind of resource could have been used to truly help others. There are those in life, we know them, who are quite comfortable showing their love for Jesus. They are not self-conscious in their worship, expressing freely their devotion to him. And there are those who are glad for the opportunity to speak their mind about how inappropriate they think that expression is, or at least how they think it should be different. A scared world needs a fearless church, not a judgmental one. Think about how Mary's fearless act embodies some of Jesus's key teachings. Think of some of Jesus's words as I read them for you today. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will find it. Where your treasure is, there shall your heart be also. The hour is coming and is now here when all true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Let your light so shine before all people so they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Mary believed Jesus was the Son of God. She took his teachings to heart and her life became about what she could do to bring him honor. Those closest to Jesus knew why he was going to Jerusalem. Maybe they didn't grasp all that would occur. Maybe they didn't know the full agony of the cross, but he had told those he trusted what would happen, that he was going there to die. In Mary's actions, we sense a heaviness of spirit, maybe a dread of what will come. Jesus says Mary bought this perfume for his burial. She knew. We think how those who are close to God honor him in the way that he deserves. Jesus rebukes Judas because he welcomed this beautiful act of worship done for him. It was the right choice. God says what matters is our heart toward him. Jesus is saying the money could have been given to the poor at any time. But this moment, this moment with him was never going to happen again in quite this way on earth. What a beautiful idea. What an important idea for us to think about. We know that life is fleeting and life is short. Jesus will soon be killed. 
We don't want to miss the chance that we have to love those in our lives when we can. In times both with and without a scary virus, anything can happen. We need to keep speaking and showing our love for God and one another. Here we see Mary wanting to glorify Jesus as Lord. In the Gospel of John, the kingship of Jesus is a main theme. Mary's act can then be interpreted as preparing him for burial, and it can be interpreted as showing his supreme, his supreme life over everyone, his supreme reign over everyone, especially her. This makes her a witness to his lordship. She is telling us who he really is. The crowds will hail him as a potential ruler. Judas will betray. Pilate will demand to know if he is the king. Caiaphas will ask repeatedly, who are you? Peter will deny. Haters will scorn and mock. John will agree to take care of his mother. Nicodemus and Joseph will come to help bury him. But Jesus says, wherever the gospel is preached, what Mary has done will be told. This act of worship, this fearless act of Mary's will be a witness of who Jesus is. When Mary boldly proclaims Jesus as the one worthy of all we are and all we have, this is when Holy Week truly begins. Later on this week, Jesus will wash the feet of the disciples. He'll model servanthood. He'll tell them, I want you to go and to do likewise. But here's Mary already living out that lesson, expressing a depth of insight and love for her God. Tozer's last sermon was to emphasize the Lordship of Christ in the church. He was worried that an understanding, that an obedience to Christ's Lordship was waning and that it would be lost if believers didn't pay attention. This is an inspiration that we take then from Mary's life as we come to the table of communion today. Jesus is with you at the supper he began. He joins us. He consecrates the elements that we have gathered to honor him. We are at the beginning of the week where his death on our behalf comes into sharp focus. So we reflect on what it means that Jesus is our King. Jesus is our beloved Lord. He is our Savior. And we think about Mary's act in our minds. We want to come to the table and express our love and our faith and our trust and our devotion to the one who died for us. Each one of us has the opportunity to honor Jesus with our lives. How will we choose to live for him with who we are and what we have? What we continue to learn from Mary's life is still what the better choice looks like. In this holiest of weeks, we have countless options before us and how it is that we will live. We can live for ourselves or we can put Jesus first, discerning what this looks like as we spend time connecting with him, learning from his word, praying to him. Because an anxious world needs a bold church. In this moment, let us commit again to live boldly for Jesus, who is our King, who is our God. We remember his death on our behalf today with humility. 
and lament and gratefulness. May Jesus continue to be the center of all that we treasure. We're going to read now a short liturgy and Mark will join me. The words will be on the screen so you can read along. After I read, I will invite you to partake of the elements that you have at home. If you have not yet gotten them together, now would be a good time to hit the pause button and do so. You don't have to be a member of any church in order to freely receive the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is necessary is a contrite heart and a willingness to put your faith in him for your life and to say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen. Hear the invitation to the sacrament. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who live in love and peace with your neighbors, and who intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and humbly kneeling, make your honest confession to Almighty God. We want to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with great mercy has promised forgiveness to all who turn to you with hearty repentance and true faith, have mercy upon us, pardon, and deliver us from our sins. Make us strong and faithful in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together. Together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who gave in love your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who by his sacrifice offered once for all, did provide a full, perfect, and sufficient atonement for the sins of the whole world. We come now to your table in obedience to your Son, Jesus Christ, who in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Together. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly ask, and grant that we, receiving this bread and this cup, as he commanded, and in the memory of his passion and death, may partake of his most blessed body and blood. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. In like manner, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. 
along with the disciples who celebrated Jesus on that first Palm Sunday, we joyfully praise you on this day together. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Amen. Jesus, we celebrate your presence among us now. In this moment, while uh, some piano music is played for you, we invite you to partake of the elements in your home, knowing that the Lord is with all of us and binding us all together in his spirit and in his body. Amen. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. closing benedictory prayer. I invite you to either close your eyes and uh, just silently pray with me or the words will be on the screen and you can say them together with me. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world or stay home in the strength of your Holy Spirit to give ourselves for others. Allow us to know you more in this holy week leading up to the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Before we go, I just want to tell you uh, two quick things. One is that uh, Pastor Nikki will be sending some Holy Week resources for adults today. So please be looking uh, in your email for that. She has some very good resources for you. And also, as we go, I invite you to pass the peace of Christ. You have received the peace of Christ through the communion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we invite you to pass the peace with those that you are sharing life with now, either those who are with you in your home or those that are available via text or email or phone call or those neighbors that you see on the street. Go in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace of Christ. The peace of Christ. Oh